trying to go through here now. I want to kind of get this whole this whole north section touched up to what I can. So I'm going through this morning and taking the excavator and all the spots that I couldn't get the loader to fit in. And luckily, I can sit on this side of the track and reach everything. I was a little worried if it was going to work or not, but. Uh, Just got enough reach. I thought if it didn't, I got that one little flatbed car up there. I was like, huh, wonder how much weight that thing would hold. <laughs> if I can walk the excavator up on top of it and just pull myself around the track. But I don't know if it's big enough to hold the excavator. And I don't know if it's rated for 13,000 pounds. But it's all drying out really nice now that it's uh, spread out and gets a little bit of wind and sun on it. It was just so wet from being piled up in the shade. None of it's going to look that great because it is just going to be a very, very rough grade. But I think they're just going to plan on letting it kind of, the weeds or whatever here just take back over. But it will be a deal where I will come in probably with a diamond mower. I don't know, you know, a couple times a year I may just mow two swaths. <coughs> I may just mow a couple swaths out from the track, keep that kind of mowed down. And they may let the rest of it go, but it may be once a year and come in there and kind of mow it down and clean it up a little bit. So at least this way you don't have these surprise piles of junk that you wouldn't see when you're out there mowing. consistent fall down to these pipes. So, I mean, you know, if it's not like perfect finish grade type stuff, that's probably going to be fine. I mean, it's got a lot of roots and mulch and junk like that left in there from moving it around. I really think it would top it off nice and now to come back and see, kind of see on those ties. Maybe you can't, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but maybe add another thing of rock and just kind of let it run a little further down in there. When they put it on before, the ditch was so steep that it just ran down to the bottom of it. And we may look at doing that, I may be able to just run some loads of rock down here and just dump it on this edge with this. That's where it would be handy if you had like a little dump trailer train car like they do on the big ones where they're either like side dump or if you could just pull it along with the excavator and scoop out of there would be cool. Let's see if I can fat one of those up. Problem is uh, I don't really need one often. <laughs> We've actually got a chance, like a 50 or 60 percent chance of rain on Sunday. It's supposed to be a lot cooler next week. So that's going to be kind of a good test. I'm, I got my laser with me today. I'm going to, before I leave, go down here and make sure we got Good consistent fall. I don't want to have any spots that are kind of low and it's going to hold water. So, like I said, this whole section from where I started down past the curve was the uh, that was the worst spot. That's where I left the most of the spoil piles and just the jug. of it. I mean, 
mean like this side I may just uh, I may run the loader down it I think it's pretty smooth it may be a little rutted up from where they ran their uh, machines and stuff now I do need to touch up some rock uh, on the road and I may even bring the international bag and just tailgate out just put like a fresh top coat on here and kind of get the grade of that thing back and that would help actually help maybe build some of the rock up on this edge but that would just probably be I don't know six or eight loads in that little truck and I do enjoy running the excavators and stuff but I, I don't know I guess call me weird but I, I still really enjoy like the finish grading process I think that's probably one of my most favorite things is just to come in and grade something out like it's all just rough and a mess and just to make it look nice and function when you're done so that's I guess that's why I always got into landscaping was I enjoy going into either new construction homes or existing homes and building it and fixing people's yards and just kind of shaping it up so I know a lot of people don't really enjoy running the skid steer or track loader but I guess maybe I've done it so long that it's just easier for me that but I just always I've always enjoyed grading work it is fun to grade now even with the excavator too especially this grading bucket just to help slick things up it's that's definitely been a game changer for me and one of these days I hope to have a tilt grading bucket on here and that'll help even more Bucket on this machine and that loader I've got is a pretty lethal combination on uh, finish grading work. I'm hoping to get a grading bucket uh, for the 2152. I've talked to Work Brow a little bit about a tilt grading bucket for it. Like to have one. I, they're a lot more expensive than just a typical grading bucket, and they weigh about a thousand pounds more. So the tilt part of it adds another thousand pounds on the end of the stick. So I know everyone keeps telling me that I need a tilt grading bucket on that machine. But it may be that I get the tilt bucket on this machine and just get a big grading bucket. Because like I said, 2150 is more just bulk material stuff. So maybe that I can rough it in close enough with the, just a standard 60 inch grading bucket. And then if I gotta fine tune anything, I can use this one. And I don't know, I may. I'd like to demo one because my whole work route setup I love on the 2150, but. You can tell that it probably weighs five or six hundred pounds more than that other 2150 did. Cause that thumb on that machine is stout. I mean, that steel is probably an inch wide on that thumb. The thumb weighs 1,400 pounds by itself. Or, uh, 1,275, I believe. The bucket's 1,400. Uh, the cover may weigh 1,000, so there's, what, 3,600 pounds. thousand pounds on that for the tilt part of the grading bucket. I don't know, like I said, it's it's handy. I mean, just watching Chris use his all the time, it is a time-saving deal. I can totally see the benefits of it, but it's just something I need to kind of justify. That's why I was talking to Jonathan from Work Brow, you know, that's what he said. He's, kind of recommend just the standard grading bucket and then get the tilt bucket on this one too unless he said like you know you're using that 2150 to just constantly finish grade with the tilt bucket all the time he said he couldn't really justify the extra expense and weight I 
part of it. I mean, I know I get a lot of people telling me, you, I need this, I need that. The problem is, I don't, I don't really make a ton of money at what I do, so. I do okay, I'm able to pay for everything. I have a little bit left over, but there's not always just an extra eight or nine thousand dollars lying around for a 60 inch tilt bucket. <laughs> I've gotten a little crazy here this year with the uh, excavators and trailers and all that. So maybe that we just get a normal grading bucket for now, and one of these days work up to a tail bucket. I don't know. And I'm also working with my neighbor on. He does software stuff and websites. He is actually starting on the Elite Earthworks website. So. Working with me and Miss Elite, she's going to run it after it gets up and going. Uh, I don't, I can't even give you for sure. I don't know, did you call it a start date or when it's up and running yet? But our plan is to have it going here. I don't know. We'll say this fall or something. And I'm going to try to get a decent stock of shirts. We'll have gray shirts like that I wear and then uh, probably hoodies I think she's got a black shirt maybe with the pink logo and then I'll have uh, my gray hats to start out with so it's only going to be a uh, very limited stuff at the beginning but once again like I said all this stuff is done done with what I made like my uh, what little I make off YouTube I just run it through the business as well and that tries to help kind of cover if I need camera stuff or just like that if I want to save up for some shirts I try to set it aside and do that so that's part of my fault. I mean, I've wanted to buy shirts sooner and start trying to sell them, but then I gotta buy, you know, a $2,000 bucket for the loaders when the bucket wears out. Sometimes there's just not always enough money to get things started. I'm kind of hoping or thinking the shirt's gonna be a deal where I gotta put you know, take some money out of the business to buy the first round, and then I'm hoping, it, I could be wrong, but hopefully it's successful enough that when I sell the first round of shirts, it can pay for the second round. So I'll just keep taking that shirt money and just kind of reinvesting it in more product, really. I don't, I don't really ever care if it makes, you know, I got any money left over, but as long as it can, kind of sustain itself. I'll keep making ads and shirts and selling it. I'm going to let her, like I said, run it. She'll be in charge of uh, taking the orders, packaging them up, delivering them, and then we'll see how it goes. And then maybe try to slowly add different shirts or more colors. I know I've had a lot of emails and questions about shirts and hats, so hopefully it'll be successful. Like I said, we'll see. I figure starting out it's going to be a little more expense on my end. So I got to buy all the stuff first, but I'm staying busier with summertime now, so I got a little extra money in there where maybe I'm able to do that. And I'd like to have them done before fall or, you know, Christmas time and stuff like that gets here. I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about selling shirts, so it seems like maybe that would be uh, a good time to have it done. I'll keep everybody posted on that. And everyone, you're probably sick of hearing me talk, so uh, let's change up the camera angles and. down the way.
I'm going to attempt to do here, they're kind of just wanting more, it's going to look more like a berm, I guess. They want to be able to kind of come in here and mow it and maintain it a little bit. And you can tell the road on that inside, since there's no fabric, got pretty, uh, no tracked in or kind of washed out and stuff. So uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is just get the loader up on top of there and just kind of cut that off. And then I'll shape the sides because that's probably what we'll be mowing it with is uh, the diamond mower. So yeah, I wouldn't, they just, they were real wet when I did them with the 2150 and they, I don't know, they, <laughs> they don't really look like much of anything now. So maybe we can shape it up. They're going to look like a little more man-made berms and stuff like that instead of kind of rolling hills. But this stuff doesn't make a real good rolling hill anyways. So I think what I'm going to, like I said, try to do, uh, just kind of get the loader up on top and just take my time and just start cutting that off probably pushing some of it to the back and then trying to get a nice angle or edge out here and then kind of flatten it off on the same thing on that other side so i think it'll go a little quicker and i can kind of get my angles and grades that i want long ways with it a little easier than trying to use the excavator so you can do this with the loaders uh it's a real good way to normally knock a track off there if they're not tensioned right so all you got to do is just kind of listen to the tracks and listen to the machine and you can kind of tell it'll bind up a little bit and start kind of clanging so if you just back up some it'll that's what i did just on that other side i popped it off the front idler and i was able to just kind of back up and it jumped back on there so we'll uh jump in there and see if we can't turn these into something
it at a guy because my GoPro was shut off. I think the heat is getting to him. But uh, anyway, that's just kind of a quick way to go about that. I'm going to, you know, dress it up a little bit more, of course. But uh, I don't think I'm going to do anything on the backside because I'll lose height. And with all those trees and stuff right there, trying to cut that off and slope around them and stuff, I just kind of want it to... I kind of like the look. I mean, I know it's nice and uniform and stuff, but it'll look pretty good when there's grass on it and it's a little cleaner than all those other piles. So I'm amazed that uh, the stuff actually turned out pretty nice once it's dried out. It's, it's got a lot of clay and stuff in it, but it's still it's going to be ideal for these. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to kind of go with that all the way around the other side. Like I said, if you can just visualize it with the grass back on here, I mean, just as long. <laughs> I'll probably be the only one that mows it or let them know just to not run over that side. But you can kind of just let the woods grow back up and just mow maybe two to three swipes <clears throat> on the edge of this berm. And that'll kind of give them a little bit of terrain difference. I may get on the back side of there where that pile was wider and dress that up. But there's just not a whole lot I can do around those trees and plus i mean i take the excavator and knock some of it down but i think that's kind of that's definitely going to be a lot cleaner of a look and stuff so we'll jump back in the loader and finish this up around to where those two pipes are at. okay so i got a little cocky with it <laughs> it started making some noise here because what happens this side's been doing this track's been in pretty bad shape since then you can tell where it broke right there can't move it but anyway it pulled apart it started jumping off the front idler because what it does it gets over here and then the bottom of it twist partially because these cables are all busted from pushing all this clay so when i tried to start it started backing up you could hear it i did it yesterday and it backed up and i've done it before where if you stop as soon as you hear it you can kind of start backing up and it'll jump back on there but i think this time went ahead and broke right there so then it just jumped off this way instead of uh, jumping back on so well, luckily I've got the 260 up there I'm gonna go get a couple pieces of railroad tie throw in the back and I guess I'll just kind of show you guys <clears throat> how to throw one of these back on real quick so yeah you guys can go ahead and give me a hard time and give me the old I told you so I run on these real steep slopes and stuff all the time so it's really no big deal but Normally my tracks are in a little bit better shape. I may have been uh, pushing it a little bit, but it's aggravating because I was just getting ready to back up. And once you kind of make that next cut, it's just where the, that's why I was keeping the top flat. Because then the tracks will stay on the bottom flat. If not, that outside edge uh, kind of starts veering over and it'll pop off that one. So like I said, that one's been having some issues because I think it's stretching out pretty bad because every week or so I'll tighten it up a little bit more. So I know it's, I know there's supposed to be four cables in there and I've only got two. So uh, yeah, I've been pushing it a little bit on what I'm doing with it, but we'll go get the excavator and put this thing back on. Okay, I got my cover off and I got the grease fitting out. So now I'm gonna use the excavator and push the front idler back. You'll see grease and stuff coming out of there. slide those railroad ties under the back of it and then use the bucket I'll push down and that'll essentially raise the whole machine up I just kind of got to watch it since I'm on the side of a hill but it'll put pressure on the back when it'll pick the back end of the uh, the back idler up and I can put the bucket down and pick the front up more but the easiest way to get this thing back on there is to I put it over the top of the sprocket or the drive motor and then kick the back end underneath there and then try to get it on the rollers and put it over the front out of the last. That's usually what works best in the shop. Uh, we'll see how it works out here.
okay this is the part where you normally get your grease gun back out grease it up push that back on then you back it off the hill <laughs> my grease gun's in my pickup truck so yeah yeah that was pretty simple i mean not everyone's just always got an excavator just lying around so you'd have to fight it a lot more but yeah picking the back up kicking the bottom and the sprocket over and then pushing it on the front is the way to do it and i don't know why i did finally figure out how to get my bucket on backwards so uh kind of excited about that so i guess this was a good thing so you just have to have the bucket almost dumped completely and then just put it on that uh back pin and then roll it in there before i was always just trying to pick it up like i do the other way and it doesn't work so good to know but yeah we'll see if we can't get this thing out of here now all right well my grease gun is in route so i was just going to show this real quick this is why i always go and preach with the oem tracks so you got one cord i'm thinking it's just two i think that one's just slid over but uh the aftermarket only they only have this one wire because i had one set of aftermarket one time i got 400 hours out of them and it did this exact same thing now normally i get 2000 2400 hours out of a set of tracks but as you guys saw before i pretty much destroyed these whenever we were doing all the rock and clay so i only had the one other band right up by here holding this together and if i wasn't getting all cocky with <clears throat> i wasn't getting all cocky with it today uh, it would have probably lasted a little bit longer but that's the big thing right there i mean they're just a lot stronger there's just more metal and the, the cables make a big difference because these bars i may cut this one apart and show you for those that haven't seen one but it's just got these steel bars that you can kind of see inside that's what the rollers run on these steel pads why it sounds like a little dozer but they put those across and then run these cables all the way around them and then just cover them in rubber so uh yeah the the oems they're more expensive but they are way way stronger so which i know i'm showing you that now after i've busted mine but <laughs> these were already in bad shape well i'm waiting on her to get here with that uh i'm gonna use the excavator and kind of grade this hill the show must go on so there's nothing else i can do for like 20 minutes so we'll just get up on there i'll just use the blade and the bucket and try to angle this that's what i did there because i'm probably going to i'm hoping i can just grease that up a little bit and then just kind of drive forward off of it because i'm sliding off that other side now so i don't want to put any much be better to come this way and go forward than trying to back up and turn it to get it up there so worst case i'll just turn it and shoot off down that way and then drag it out of there but i think i can get that slicked up enough i can kind of come down here and turn and hit that and then just limp it onto the truck 